Hi, I'm Enting, and the Korea WUDC team has asked me to film a short video on clashes and prioritization. I want to start by explaining what I think a clash is and why we should judge debates based on clashes. A clash is essentially an issue that multiple teams are trying to contest and win. As an example, if we take the motion, this house would ban all drugs, one clash might be the necessity of a ban. Another clash might be its effectiveness. As mentioned in the introduction video, BP debating is judged comparatively. The analysis provided by teams cannot be evaluated in a vacuum. Arguments need to be judged against each other. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, apples and oranges. So it is often extremely difficult to compare two arguments about completely different issues. Sorting arguments into clashes helps provide a structured framework to first compare arguments about the same issue without bringing in confounding factors like which issue is more important. This thus makes it easier to judge the debate. Additionally, without clashes, judges might risk missing team contributions and important points, which would then also make judging more difficult. So how do you identify and sort arguments into clashes? Well, ideally, teams will do this for you. They will say something along the lines of, these are the main clashes of the round, and then they'll analyze what each team managed to prove within the clash. But teams don't always do this. Most of the time, they just make arguments. The judge should then identify the broad themes that the arguments are coalescing around that will generally be at least two or three in every debate. A rule of thumb might be to look for claims that are being substantively disputed by teams across a large portion of the debate. Judging clashes doesn't mean counting up arguments within each clash or counting the absolute number of clashes won. To evaluate who won a particular clash, judges should look closely at the analysis provided by teams, including implicit and preemptive material. They should evaluate the logical links mechanisms, examples, and explanations of impacts provided to see if the argument was proven to a greater degree than the opposing team's argument. In addition, judges should consider the extent to which arguments are refuted. Rebuttal will be covered in significantly more detail in the next video, but broadly speaking, it can do two things. First, a rebuttal to an argument can mitigate the scale and scope of an argument's impact or provide reasons to believe it is untrue or leads to harmful outcomes. A rebuttal can also offer competing claims to an argument, which may weaken the persuasiveness of the original argument and strengthen the case of the opposing team. The judge should then determine to what extent the rebuttal has succeeded in minimizing the original argument, considering, of course, preemptive argumentative material that interacts with this rebuttal, as well as any direct responses from the original team to the rebuttal. Crucially, an argument being responded to does not mean that it is defeated. The response may have been weak or may have only tackled one portion of the argument. Judges should therefore evaluate how much of the analysis is left standing after the rebuttal has been made and after responses to the rebuttal have been given. Since British Parliamentary is a four-team format, there are two things to note here. The first is that judges, when making direct comparisons between two teams, should not bring in contributions from a third team. For example, when deciding between opening government and opening opposition, a judge shouldn't say, well, but CG responded to OO by giving this rebuttal, so OO's case is now weaker, which means OG wins over them. No, when you are comparing two teams, you should keep the comparison to those issues brought up by those two teams, because it is extremely unfair if one team ends up being defeated by two other teams solely on the basis of a single other team's response. So really try to be very specific when you are comparing clashes. Try not to, in fact, don't bring in arguments from a third team where you are doing direct head-to-head -head comparisons. Second, when evaluating two teams on the same bench, consider how significant each team's contributions were. You would consider, for instance, whether one team's arguments provided key logical links without which the other team's arguments do not apply, or whether one team has provided convincing reasons for their argument being more significant. Most debates will revolve around more than one clash, which may result in a situation where different teams have won different clashes. 
Again, this does not necessarily mean that a team that has won more clashes wins by default. We do not judge by counting clashes. After all, one team may have won the most important clash in the round, while the other team could have won multiple clashes that were more trivial and less contributive to the round as a whole. For example, even if a team narrowly proves that a particular outcome is likely, another team may be able to successfully show that this outcome, while likely, is actually not going to be particularly harmful. Thus, taken as a whole, even if the team has won the clash on the probability of something happening, what they have ultimately managed to do is just to show that it's very likely that a not very bad thing will happen. So taken against each other, you probably would say that they haven't made a huge impact on the round by the end of this clash. So judges should first determine who won each clash and then evaluate the impact and the significance of each clash in comparison with each other. In determining which clash is more meaningful, judges should judge based on the metrics provided by the teams. So the following is going to be a ranked list of steps to follow in deciding how to prioritize issues that are brought up within the debate. As far as possible, you must judge the debates using metrics provided by the teams. If you are very, very lucky, all the teams in the round will have explicitly agreed on a metric for what is important in the round. For instance, Perhaps all teams have explicitly agreed that the most important thing in the round is to maximize the number of lives saved. And if this is the case, then the judge should consider which team best achieves this goal. If this does not happen, meaning teams don't give you an explicit metric for the round, then judges should derive the criteria from what all teams implicitly consider to be important. So even if teams do not explicitly agree on a criteria, they may still implicitly agree for instance, if all the analysis by teams is about maximizing the number of lives saved, that is the criteria of the round, even if no one says out loud that this is the goal. If no team agrees on which clash is the most important, either implicitly or explicitly, and all teams assert differently, then judges should consider which team has most successfully proven their metric. Teams should give plausible reasons to believe that what they say is important, they should not just be asserting that this is the most important thing in the round without providing some form of explanation for why this is true. Most persuasive reasons are not too divorced from reality. They will tend to mirror what we see in the real world. So if a team says that a clash is important, they should be giving a number of reasons for it, and most of those reasons should be because of what the real world will look like. If none of these apply, meaning there is no explicit agreement between teams, there is no implicit agreement between teams in teams' argumentation, and there is no team that has successfully proven a metric to be true, then as a last resort, judges should prioritize clashes based on what the average reasonable person would take to be important. This does not mean making a random judgment. This instead means that you should weigh clashes based on your intuitions about what the real world will be like. And in many cases, good judges will be in agreement of what those intuitions should be. This will be covered in greater detail in the workshop on Goldilocks interventions. So please watch that video as well. Last, there are some situations where arguments are claimed by teams to be off clash. Um, a team claiming that an argument is off clash doesn't automatically win just by making that assertion. They do need to justify why they believe the other team's argument is irrelevant to the clash or to the round. They cannot just assert that this is the case. If they provide justifications for their claim, then these justifications should be evaluated in the manner discussed earlier, both in this video and in the introductory video, which discusses how to evaluate analysis and consider various kinds of material. So this has been the introduction on how to identify, evaluate, and weigh clashes. Thank you for your attention and good luck.